talking about here? Why are we having this talk? Why have I put a slide up on the screen at the bar that says profit first for lawyers? I can tell you why, because I like to get a lot of flame and spam on my Facebook page asking me about what the hell I'm talking about and why I'm saying profit first for lawyers. So let me tell you what the hell I'm talking about when I say profit first for lawyers. There's two aspects about this that I want to talk to you today, two aspects that I want you to take away and change your life. First, how to improve the profits in your law firm business right now, right away. Not in a year, not in a quarter, not in a month, but tomorrow. How we can begin that change tomorrow. And then for those of you who have clients, who has clients, anyone? Yeah, for those of you who have clients who own businesses or have a life, um, how to improve their profits too. It's about how to be a more holistic representative, advocate, advisor to your clients and become more deeply embedded in their lives. I've been doing this for a really, really long, well, in all honesty, I have been advising law firms and lawyers and building their businesses for a really long time, um, for more than a decade now. This business, though, is really old in that I started it in March of this year. Um, and I started in March of this year because I found that I was, kept working with a lot of law firms that had one fundamental problem, and that is not understanding how to take their profits first and why. And the results of it have been astounding. Um, let me just introduce you to one person at first. Her name is Jenny. Um, Jenny's got a family law firm in North Carolina. Uh, in one year, working with Profit First, working with me using Profit First, she's retired $38,000 of credit card debt, um, gone on vacations, started building this, this picture on the bottom, her Aruba condo. Uh, that's a condo in Aruba. Um, and is planning this year to spend 10 days on a cruise, a week in Paris, et cetera, just really following this system to improve the profits from the business she already had. From the business she already had. But what's more, she's using this to improve her clients' lives as well. I'm also working with another law firm, I'm working with about, we have about a couple dozen law firms that are in this program already, another law firm in uh, Central Florida, about $45 million law firm, that is nearly broke. $45 million law firm and they're nearly broke and this system is gonna turn around and put 10 million extra dollars in the owner's pocket in 2020. This is the power of Profit First, but the real power is what it does for them and their ability to represent their clients more fully, more thoroughly, and more ethically. Who the hell is this guy? My name is Christopher Anderson and I love helping lawyers build their businesses. I've done it for a long time, and, uh, and now I'm embarked on this profit first uh, adventure with a bunch of my clients to move them forward in the results that they're getting. Um, I have a book coming out in January called Profit First for Lawyers. If some of you were here last year, I talked a little bit about it um, and, and asked you if you'd be interested. You guys said yes, and that started me, and I launched three months later, four months later. Is profit first for you? I think we have to start there because it's not for everybody. Is it for you? If you own your law firm or, or are a shareholder in your law firm or in a part of your business, it's for you. If you work hard, in other words, you put in the hours in your business, but it's not the profits you take home, your take home pay is not proportional to your effort, it's for you. Or if you are getting a proportional results based on your effort, but it's never going to get you where you need to go. It's for you. And most of you are not going to get where you need to go based on your own efforts. And Profit First can be for you. But the most important question is, do you actually want to have a profitable law firm? And I call this the most important question because quite honestly, most lawyers that I talk to the first time haven't actually thought about this question. They have a law firm, they have a business, they've started the business, they've hung a shingle, they got clients, they do marketing, they do great work, and they've never asked the question, what is this thing supposed to do for me? Why do I do it? They get confused. Are you confused? 
Do you think you started this business for your clients? You didn't. Do you think you started this for some other goal than serving you? You didn't, because you know what? You can do all of those things with a job. Let me tell you the difference between having a job and having a law firm, business. A job, if you've ever had one, I have, I know what they're like. What you do is you put in and you create great value, great value for your clients, great value for the owners of the business. And you get to take home a percentage of the value you create, a percentage less than 100, significantly less than 100. When you have a business, you create value for your clients, and you create value for others, and you get to take home more than the value you personally create in the business. That's how you know the difference. Asking the question, do you want to have a profitable law firm? The answer is yes, if you want the benefits of a profitable law firm. If you want reliable, steady income instead of wacky, up and down income. If you want to know at the end of the year when your accountant calls you in April or October and says, you know, I've got good news and bad news. Good news is you did better this year than last year. The bad news is do you have your checkbook out, right? You want to have, having a profitable law firm means you've already got that taken care of. You've got that set aside. Having a profitable law firm means you can keep your promises to your stakeholders. Not just the shareholders, your stakeholders, the people in your life who depend on you and the promises that you make to them. You want to have a profitable law firm if you want to have reliable hours that, that you promise that you'll put into the business, that you'll work in the business, have enough time to work on the business, and then have enough time to do the other things that are important in your life. Now, people hear that and they say, well, duh, you're making it really simple. Do I want to have a profitable law firm? Like, who doesn't want all that? You know what? A lot of people don't want all that. They might say they do, but they don't, right? Because their actions show that they want other things more. Their actions show they want other things more. People don't really want to have a profitable law firm when they want to see a direct relationship between the work they put in and the reward they get. I would want another dollar, I got to put in another hour. Some people like that. How do I know? Because they do it. Some people don't want to have a profitable law firm because they have bought into the doctrine of sacrifice that this profession, I should have mentioned, I am among you, I am a member of this bar for, I, I asked them to tell me, but I think it's at least 15 years. I'm a member, I've been, I've been a prosecutor here in New York City, I've been a private lawyer for a, number, a lot of years, and then I just, ah, too many people were asking me how I did it, so I was just like, let's just, let me help you do it. But the doctrine of sacrifice, that there's something about this profession that says we're only doing it right if we're suffering. If that's your shtick, maybe you don't want a profitable law firm. But if you want to be able to sell this business one day, either because you want out, or because something happens in your life that you've got to get out, or because your family needs to sell it because you're not around anymore, you want a profitable law firm. If you want to be able to, this, this is the one that gets me. If you want the business, if you want your firm to help more people and do more in the world than is necessary to meet your personal financial needs, you want a profitable law firm. What do I mean by that? Like, if your law firm is based only on your financial needs, then you're only gonna take it so far. And you're only gonna serve and help a certain number of people. But if you have a bigger vision, if you wanna change the world, whatever that world is, the world could be your community, the world could be your neighborhood, the world could be your city, the world could be the world, the world could be divorcing people in your region, the world could be business people in your region, whatever it is, if you want to change it, you want to make real change, that business is going to have to be bigger than you. And it has to be profitable to be bigger than you. So why do lawyers have unprofitable law firms? Well, I've given you some of the reasons, right? Because some of the nonsense that we have been indoctrinated with over the years about what it means to have a law firm. But there's other reasons that we tell ourselves, and they all share one common attribute. 
There's a professor in Yale. Yeah, no, Princeton, sorry. Professor at Princeton, Harry, it's either Frankfurt or Frankfurter, I always get it wrong. But Harry Frankfurter, I think it is, wrote a fantastic book describing what these thoughts are. And the book is called On Bullshit, right? We tell ourselves that the economy is tough, that the clients can't afford our services. There's not enough clients out there who can afford our services. That um, they, even when they can, they don't pay, and we have to chase them. Um, that, that legal Zoom is eating the profession from the bottom, people are doing self-service, that larger law firms, the people are coming out of larger law firms and starting virtual law firms eating us from the top. There's all these excuses and reasons why we don't have profitable law firms and they're all bullshit. What is bullshit? Well, we know what the truth is, right? This is Harry Frankfurter tells us this. We know what the truth is. The truth is when we say something that we know demonstrably to be true. And we know, because most of us have children, what a lie is. We don't lie, but the kids, we know what a lie is. We know what's true, and we say something different. But in this vast middle are these things that we say when we don't do the work necessary to actually determine whether or not what's coming out of our mouth is true. These are the things that cause lawyers to not have proper law firms. So why don't you have a profitable law firm or a more profitable law firm? Well, if those aren't the reasons, let me show you how. What I'm going to cover with you today is, first of all, how Profit First works in your law firm. I'm just going to walk you through it because it's not rocket science, right? I'm going to walk you through exactly how to build five accounts to build profit in your law firm. I'm going to talk to you about how to start a new practice area to help your clients do this. And then I'm going to have a call to action. Right? Now, everybody gets shocked by this. Like, like the, all the speaker's going to do some stuff, and at the end, he's going to hand out his business cards and tell, him, tell you to call him. You know, the previous speaker did that, and people are like, oh, I'm so offended by the fact that they actually tried to do that. Every speech should have a call to action. Right? Because otherwise, why am I wasting your time if I'm not going to ask you to do something? So we'll see what, uh, what you're willing to do to make a change. But so, the five accounts. Let me just talk to you real quick. We'll go in more detail, but I've heard some people like want to get the meat and potatoes right up front. So here it is. The five accounts. We all have one of them. The account the money comes into, right? And unfortunately for most of us, we call this the operating account or the business account. We, we take in the money, people write us a check. Anybody who wants to write me a check, feel free, pass it up. Um, we write, they write us a check, we put it in the operating account. And then from the operating account, what do we do? We, we pay bills. Well, Profit First says no more of that. The money comes into the income account and it stays there. There's no checks, there's no credit cards, there's no way to get it out except one way, which is to move it to other accounts. Twice a month, once a week, whatever you choose, you then move the money out of the income account into the other four accounts. First, you take your profit. I'll talk to you more about how that works. And you move it to the profit account. Then you take your pay and you move it to the pay, your owner's pay account. Then you take your taxes and you put that into another account. And we've got four accounts already, right? The income account, the profit account, the owner's comp account, the tax account. And then what's left over goes in the operating account. And that's how you run your business. That's it. That's how Profit First works. I'm going to give it to you in a little bit more detail in a second, but I want to kind of get that out there for you. Why is this important to you now? I hope that it is. Otherwise, again, I hope that I'm not standing up here wasting your time. This is important to you now if you believe, as most like literally, I've, I've done surveys, it's over 90%, most people believe that they cannot control their profits, that you cannot decide ahead of time what your profits are going to be. If you believe that making more money means working harder, this is important to you right now. I just came back from Clio conference. Did anybody go to Clio conference? No. Well, I'll tell you all about it. Um, I just came back from the Clio conference. Clio puts out every year for the past several years uh, a fantastic document called the Clio Legal Trends Report. Everybody can download it. Um, but I wanted to pull out one nugget for you today. 
And that one, this is the one that to me is both pessimistic and optimistic. Pessimistic and why I'm doing this. This is my passion. Listen, let me tell you why I do this, right? Before I even go here. Because like, people ask me, why are you doing this? You're a lawyer. Why are you, why are you doing this proper first thing? I walk around and I see a lot of lawyers struggling. Not getting the results that they went to law school to get for their lives, for their family, for their stakeholders. And I walk around and I see a vast mass of people believing that legal services are not affordable, that they're not for them. And I look at that and I see the downfall of civilization. Right? When we, when we get to a place where people don't feel that justice is available, when we get to a place where people feel that they can't afford what the other people can afford as far as resolving disputes, redressing grievances, and doing that kind of thing, we got a problem. And when lawyers aren't bringing home enough money to live, we got a problem. And we got these two problems. And it's so easy to put them together and solve them both at the same time. How? By running profitable law firms. And making our clients a profit. Because if you run a profitable law firm, you can provide services that these people can afford. That's why I do this. 78% of lawyers say they're overworked. 68% underappreciated. These are huge majorities. And yet still, under these circumstances, 69% still love being a lawyer and 82% really like working with their clients. So if we can solve the first two, holy moly. I think we got something really powerful that we can do to change these two problems that I've described. That's why I do this. So why is this important to you now? Because you can decide your profits and you can get away from thinking about money, making more money, meaning working harder. But we've got to get past thinking that talking about profits is unseemly. We've got to get past this notion that running a business poorly is somehow nobler. Harry Frankfurter would tell us what that is. Don't fall for it. Don't commit this sin, right? We, one of the things we pride ourselves on is full disclosure. We always would like to be transparent. We believe that we should be fully disclosive of our clients. If we've got a conflict of interest, what are we supposed to do? Disclose it, right? If we've got, uh, if, if we're going to help our clients do a transaction, we do due diligence to make sure everything's disclosed. We do discovery when we have litigation to make sure everything's disclosed. We have an obligation to help and report disabilities that we see affecting another lawyer's performance, don't we? If you see a lawyer helping a client in court and they're drunk, do we have a duty? Yes. Of course we do. If we see them on drugs, do we have a duty? Yes, we do. If we see them through no fault of their own, struggling with a mental disability, do we have a duty? Yes. Altman Wheel, the last survey is about three years old. The numbers probably changed, but not a lot. This number represents the median take-home income for single shareholder law firms. For the owners, the median, half bring home less. Holy moly. Now, the average is about $78,000, which means the ones that half above are significantly above, but half are less. Now, let's go back to full disclosure. If we're not operating a profitable law firm, if we're worried about making the mortgage, if we're worried about paying for braces, if we're worried about college tuition, if we're worried about any of these things, are we being the most effective representative for our clients that we can be? When the settlement's on the table, what are we thinking about? When it comes time to wrap up the business deal, finish due diligence and get the ink on the paper, what are we thinking about? And do we disclose that? No. Nobody's out there going, you know, Mar there's nobody named, is anybody named Marty over here? Okay, you know Marty over here, 
Uh, you know, we, you should know that uh, he had trouble paying the mortgage last month. He's, 30, he's 60 days behind on his mortgage. Um, we, should, we need to inform the bar and tell all his clients. Is anybody doing that? No. It's the dirty little secret. But who do your clients really want to hire? They want to hire Marty? There's no Marty, right? <laughs> they want to hire Marty or they want to hire someone with a profitable law firm. Like they, they want the successful lawyer. They want you to have a profitable law firm. They want you focused on them. And folks, I've learned this the hard way. My first law firm experience was not stellar. I struggled. I didn't make a lot of money. I was mis informed about what the business was about. And I think I represented my clients pretty well, but not as well as I could have. I couldn't stretch the time. I couldn't give them what I needed. I couldn't ask them for what I needed from them in order to do the best job I could because I didn't have my mind focused around this. I learned this the hard way. This is not about greed, all right? This is about running a business that serves your clients and serves you. This is the best quote. We were, we're, we're, I'm working on a book. I'm, the book is almost finished. It's called Profit First for Lawyers. I'm going to talk to you about it in a minute. Um, and I just came up with this. What Profit First does, by taking the profit first, taking the income first, taking the taxes first, and then running the business on what's left over is it forces you to make difficult decisions about your business every week, every day. Wow, we only have this much. Do I either need to cut something else or do I need to figure out how to bring in more revenue? But I've got difficult decisions to make every day. When we pour all the money into the income, uh, into the operating account, we put off these decisions, right? Oh, phew. We got a $10,000 retainer. Oh, we got $25,000 on that settlement. Now I've got $25,000 in the operating account. I can pay all these bills and uh, we can, we can you know, pay the rent and everything else. And oh, maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be something left for me, right? But the decision's coming. The decision's coming. And the, you, you can turn the decision to be one, or the other. It's a binary decision. When thinking about your business, do you think about how the business is going to struggle through these decisions so that you don't have to? Or are you going to figure out how you're going to struggle in your life so that the business doesn't have to? That's what this boils down to. The normal way of thinking, the way accountants and bookkeepers think about your business the way most lawyers think about the business is you get the revenues and then out come all these expenses, out come all these expenses and you're hoping for a little profit to drop out the bottom. You know, you pay rent, you pay your utilities, you pay your costs, you pay your payroll, you pay your marketing, you have to pay the things to make the office run, you pay equipment, you pay training, you pay software, you pay janitors, you pay coffee, you pay office supplies, you pay for parking, you pay for health insurance, you pay for the employees' perks, and then after the Christmas party supplies and the paper clips, you hope for profit. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I first worked, walked into my law firm, I was a president, I was a prosecutor for a number of years, then I walked into a, a law firm and uh, I w actually worked there, hung my own shingle, and then they invited me to become a partner. I like a rented space, they invited me to become a partner. And I was like, okay, cool, partner sounds great. Name on the door, this is gonna be fantastic. How do we do this? How do we do this? And they showed me, <laughs> they showed me the ledger book, right? This thing. They had one, seriously, big, this big, like green, the little the things that you peeled off. And every two weeks, they looked through it, and they said, how much money we got, how many bills we have coming up in the next two weeks, whatever the difference between those are, we split. Please, sir, may I have some more? And that's just wrong. And I'm not trying to teach you an accounting class here. This is not what it's about. 
But what I want to tell you about is that these principles were meant to describe what happened in the past, and they weren't meant to be used for how to plan your future. What your accountant didn't tell you, and your bookkeeper didn't tell you, is that your accountant's job is to keep you in compliance with the rules. And your bookkeeper's job is to put the numbers in the right boxes. Neither of them have a job to do the decision that is your job which is what is my business supposed to do for me? How many profits, what profits do I want to have? You gotta decide that first. What profits do I want to have? How much does it cost to live life the way you wanna live it? Do you know? Have you thought about this? Once you know, and that's a whole nother conversation we need to have, But once you know, then you decide. What are the profits as a percent of revenues? Now, I'm going to talk to you about how you get started, because we can't just go tomorrow and go to our law firm and go like, well, hey, we've got $500,000 of revenue in our law firm, and I want to take home $300,000. So from now on, I used to be taking home $100,000, but starting tomorrow, I'm taking home $300,000. You know, big F you to the business, right? No, we can't do that in one big jump. But once we decide, we start with where we are, and I'll talk with you how to do that, we decide what percent it's going to be today. And it's going to be a positive percent today. And we take that out. Then we take the owner's comp out. And we put it, we take the profit, when I say we take it out, we take the profits out. I'm going to follow the, the gentleman who spoke before me, right? We're going, to, we're going to make places on the stage here. We take the profit out. I keep hooking it on the chair. We take the profit out and we put it over here in the profit account, which also doesn't have checks or any way to get it out. And then we take the owner's comp account of uh, the money out and we put it over here. And we take the tax reserves and we put them over here. And we take the marketing, I like to take the marketing and put it over here. And then what's left over goes here in the operating expense account. And I let these build up. When payroll comes around, for me, and when, I, when all the perks that I get out of the business, if the business pays for things that if you had a job you'd have to pay for out of your pocket, the business pays for your car, business pays for your cell phone, business pays for other things, that comes out of the owner's comp account. When it comes time to pay taxes, I take the money out of the tax account, but never any other time. And I learned to run the business on the operating expenses. Listen, my grandma had a system that wasn't different than this, right? She actually didn't use envelopes. She used stockings, and she thought nobody knew where they were, but I did. And there was a stocking that said kids. It was great. (laughs) But, you know, that's how grandma made sure there was always rent money and there was always food on the table. Right? My grandfather came home, handed her his paycheck, and went in the stockings, which he, I'm pretty sure, didn't know where they were. And she gave him back a little bit. She gave him his profit first, right? And then she set the rest aside. So how do we start this? What we do is we don't, like I said, you don't, you can't go screw you to the business and change everything all at once because you'll kill the business. So what we do first is we start to train our minds. And we look back at the past year and we say, did we have a profit at all? Right? We first decide, first before that, we decide what we want the profit to be down the road. Then we look at what past year, did we have a profit at all? Yeah? Good. Then did we pay ourselves at all? Yeah? Good. Did we pay taxes? Personally and for the business, yeah, good. Did we have marketing? Yes, good. Whatever those numbers were, for right now, that's what they are. Remember, we're not going to do anything to hurt the business. All we're going to do is change the order of operations. So let's say, for just for shits and grins, that you had a business that was bringing in $500,000. You had $50,000 of profit, 10%. You paid yourself $50,000, another 10%. You had taxes, $500,000, about $30,000, about 6%. And uh, we will ignore marketing for right now, okay? So that was 10, 10, and 6, right? So 26% 
were there. And so that means that you ran the rest of the business all last year on 74% of your revenues, right? So now we're gonna say, you know what business? You learned how to live on 74% last year. You're gonna live on 74% this year. Nothing's changed except the order of operations. You don't get to ever see the 26% business. You only get to see the 76% now so that we can be big boys and big girls and make decisions about what the business can afford based on 74%. We'll only see 74% and all those tough decisions will come and we'll make them now. And then remember I said, but we're gonna think about what profit we really want out of the business tomorrow. And then we just set up some rules. We said, can we get there in one year? Maybe yes, maybe no. I'll tell you, if you, if you want to move the profit by more than about 6%, then it's going to take longer than a year. So in other words, if you want to go from 10% to 20%, we might want to make a plan that's a little bit longer than a year. So then we figure out where are we going to end up the year. Caps, by the way. Caps is current allocation. That's how we're going to allocate things now. And so TAPS is our target allocation percentages. Where do we, how do we want to allocate them a year from now? And then we move each quarter incrementally, making no more than one and occasionally 2% moves in each row each quarter. And you say, well, shit. If I keep ratcheting profit up, where's that going to come out of? It's not going to come out of my pay. It's not going to come out of taxes. Where's it going to come out of? It's going to come out of the operating expenses. Well, shit. Like, yeah, we lived on 74% last year, but it wasn't fun. It wasn't great. How can we live on, if I move it 6%, how am I going to live on 68%? Well, find some things to cut. Make the tough decisions. Or, my preferred solution, let's bring in some more business. So that 68% is bigger than 74%. Right? We can grow the business, but we're going to grow it intentionally, knowing exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set every quarter how we're going to incrementally change it. And we do this on twice a month or once a week, religiously, fastidiously. And the business runs on what the business runs on. Does that sound complicated? Anyone? Anyone say it's too complicated? Good, you can do this. But now I want to talk to you about A, how, I, how you need to get this started for yourself, and B, how you can help your clients. It starts with a vision meeting. You need to sit, this is best done facilitated, but you can do it yourself with your stakeholder, your primary stakeholder, usually a spouse, sometimes someone else, and say, what do we want the profits to be? And in order to get there, let me tell you, this is not a short conversation. My wife and I actually do this for each other every six months because we grow and we learn and we change. What do we want the profits to be? How do we want to live our lives? And what do we want to do in the business to do that? Do we want to raise the revenues? Do we want to decrease the revenues? And you have a vision meeting that gets that answer to a place that's meaningful to you. It can't be bullshit. Oh, I want, I want to increase profits because more money is better. No, screw that. More money is not better. Improving your life is better. Making sure your retirement is fully funded is better. Making sure your children's 529 is funded is better. Getting that house that you really want is better. Making sure that you're going to retire the way you want to retire is better. Making sure that uh, your health costs are covered is better. Long-term care, I mean, all these things, that's better. Making sure that you're able to give to the charities that you really believe in, that's better. But you have to put numbers to that. And you, go, you do a vision meeting to make sure you really understand those, those numbers. Separately, and I'm not trying to sell this to you, I'm just telling you that I, my clients, I do a facilitated vision meetings with clients outside of Profit First, just something I've done for years and years and years and years. And we usually do four to six couples, and they pay $3,500 each for a two-day vision meeting. Right? That's what people are willing to pay. This is really important for you to do. It's worth the time. It's worth the effort. Before I forget, um, I, I mentioned my book, so ProfitFirstForLawyers.com forward slash NYC2019. I'll put that up later. You can get your own advanced copy of the book. The motto 
of Profit First is profitable clients, profitable you, profit first. Why profitable clients? You, first of all, should never do business with anyone unless they can make a profit working with you. You should not take a client that will not profit from your services, that will not get more value from what you provide than what they pay you, right? If you do, that you, that's called an unhappy client. You don't want to work with them, right? You need to profit them. And of course, you need to make a profit working with them. One of the ways you can make your clients better clients is to help them be more profitable too. And by the way, these chairs just have it in for me. If you help your clients be more profitable, they become better clients. If you help your clients become more profitable, you will know more about them. If you meet with your clients regularly about being more profitable, you will spot opportunities for them that you can help with or that you can refer out, and you will spot problems for them that you can help with or you can refer out. Profitable clients, it all starts with them. And like I said, we're not trying to be accountants. We're not trying to be bookkeepers in this. We are trying to be advisors that help our clients. So when we work with them, we put together a team. We get an accountant on board. We get a bookkeeper on board. I can't see that. Does that say five minutes? Thank you. Um, we get a bookkeeper on board. We get a banker on board to help them do that. And we are the captain of the team. And when we have that vision meeting, we lead the team in helping them understand in what I call a closing what the client's goals are. When you work with Profit First for Lawyers, Profit First for Lawyers does this for you to model how you can do it, if you choose to, for your clients. Then you follow up by looking at monthly reports. Every quarter, you meet with your client to make sure they're on track with their numbers. Remember that, that target allocation percentages to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do? And once a year with your clients, you redo the vision meeting. So you help your clients and you do it yourself, right? You've got to eat your own dog food. You don't dare tell your clients how to become more profitable if you're not willing to do it yourself. Now, I talked about full disclosure and I told you at the end there would be a decision. So I'm gonna ask you to make a decision because quite honestly, any good presentation any good presenter should ask you to make a decision. Otherwise, this is entertainment. And I've got a whole other speech I do for entertainment. It's a lot more fun, but this is not what I'm here to do. I'm not here to entertain you, and you didn't take this day off from your practice to be entertained. I hope you came here today to change something. So I'm gonna ask you to make a change. I'm gonna ask you to do something that's different than what you've done before. Now listen, if you're plenty profitable and don't really want to improve that, don't bother. If you are already, if your law firm's already given you what you need, don't bother. If you don't ever have to compromise what you can deliver because of profitability, this might not be for you. And if you think the thought, or if you are uneasy about talking about profit for your clients and profit for your stakeholders and refuse to do that, well then this won't be for you either. But if you want to have a more profitable law firm, if you know that if you had more regular profits, you'd be able to play more all in for your clients, and this one is the one that gets me and got me on this road. If you want to be able to look your children, look your spouse, look your stakeholders in the eye and tell them how you're going to get a return on the investment that they've allowed you to make in this business, this is for you. So what is the call to action? There's three. You can do one of three things. One, this is a tough environment to really explain this and answer your questions. I've left time for questions, but it's a tough environment to do that. Join me at dinner tonight, 6.30 at Amos Astiatorio, something like that. Anyway, if you go to this link, profitfirstlawyers.com slash NYC2019, or just come to my booth, and check us out and I'll talk to you. Um, come join me for dinner, I've got nine slots left um, and I will answer all your questions and tell you exactly how this will work in your law firm in a calm, quiet, 
place where we can talk. Um, and by the way, I've got a $49 seat deposit for that, but because you all came and talked to me, if you use the promo code committed, we can bypass the seat deposit. It'll just go to zero. Um, but please, don't do this if you're not gonna come, or if you're in doubt, because the whole reason I did the seat deposit is to avoid having an empty seat and saying no to someone else. So, but if you want to, and if you, since you were here, use the promo code committed. Two, if you can't make dinner tonight, dinner with me is an awesome thing. You really should come. But if you've somehow you've got another commitment, you can't make dinner tonight, just book an appointment. Go to the same website, profitfirstlawyers.com forward slash NYC 2019, or come to our booth and book an appointment, and I'll walk you through it um, myself. And if you do this today, if you do this today, I will schedule for you a vision meeting on me. So if you want to figure out what you want your profits to be, I'll schedule a vision meeting with me, on me, if you do one of the top two today. The third option is, and please, like don't, the fourth option is walk out of here and don't do jack, right? But I don't want to put that up there, though that is probably what most people in this room will do. The third option is do it yourself. Now listen, I have been doing this kind of thing for, uh, like specifically helping lawyers with their business for about a decade. Um, but if you can get the book and you can do it on your own. But what I'm gonna ask you to do is this. If you're gonna do it yourself, don't just walk out of here going like, yeah, I can do this myself. Do me this much of a favor. Take out a business card right now. Take it out if you're gonna DIY and write a date on the back of it. Just write a date. Make it at least three months from now and no more than a year from now. So a date somewhere, I guess three months from now would be February, from February to next October, that you'll have taken significant steps towards implementing this and give it to me. And I'm gonna call you on that date and see how you're doing. That's it, if DIY, then at least write that on the back of the card and write committed on the back of the card and put the date. Those are the three calls to action. You can have a more profitable law firm. I can help. Let me help. Thank you very much. <laughs>